in the light of all that have happened in Nigeria, it's time to discuss fake news and social media as it affects us as youth of Nigeria and our hope for a better nation. Fake news is defined as untrue information presented as news. It often has the aim of damaging the reputation of a person or entity or can even incite violence. Now joining us on Tea Time to discuss fake news and how to identify them is a digital marketer a marketing practitioner and the convener of Lagos Digital Summit, Wally Adetona. Hi, Wally. Hello. 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 Good morning, guys. Good morning, Wally. How are you doing? Oh, well, I'm fine. I can do better, but thank God. Okay, so let's talk about um, the situation we are in right now as a country and um, fake news and social media. Um, if, you'd, if you're going to rate the um, level of impact fake, fake news has on where we are right now, how would you rate that? Oh, uh, well, also, yeah, it's, it's really been a tough year for, for us as, as a nation um, going from coronavirus to answers to Lake Massacre and you know I mean I'm just praying we have the opportunity to uh, to have a Thanksgiving December uh, the, the level of um, this misinformation that has been going on on social media I mean this is even beyond the current situation I know there's been a lot of um, I know there's been a lot of advocacy um, surrounding our People use social media and how, I mean, even individuals should be accountable and they should uh, be sure whatever they post on social media. Um, however, going by recent developments, we've seen that um, social media has uh, played a very vital role in, um, in fighting the, uh, the, the menace um, the police brutality in Nigeria. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we know that there are, there are some people out there that are also um, they used the tool in their hand, which is social media, um, to pass some information that uh, might seem to have um, is, to have um, incited violence, and also um, they didn't really verify what they had posted. Um, yeah, so coming from that, I know it's 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 a really it, it's a really big issue for us to to unravel as a nation. Mm. Do you also think that um, because we know that there is something called fake news? that also creates a demon on its own, a tool for an oppressive part to be also create something or to discredit whatever seems like the real news and always call it fake news. Do you think that's something that is playing out or that can play out as well? Yes, of course. Yeah, we, we've seen that happen. I mean, the, over the past, past couple of days, uh, the, the advent of social media has played a very big role in increasing the increasing the reach of, I mean, so many types of stories. Yeah, so, I mean, however, we've seen certain uh, bodies and individuals that have also, I mean, they, they, they wrote on the body, on the on the body of fake news to discredit, I mean, peculiar genuine information, uh, information, I mean, so just so that they can uh, they can come come out as, as being the, the ones, I mean, releasing the real information. I, I don't want to start mentioning names, I mean, but, but I mean, we've seen it happen and we've seen it play come to play in the past couple of days. Um, the carriers, oftentimes, in terms of individuals now, I, I call them clout drunk individuals or clout chasers, and, and oftentimes bloggers and influencers fall in this category. Mm. And I, I think it's 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 high time we started paying attention to what we do. We should start verifying um, the, the, the truth I mean, before we post anything out there. We saw the role fake news played in the last US elections and now social media apps, I mean, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, and the like, I mean, what they did to censor and remove content that are misleading um, on, on their platforms. Yeah. And um, more recently, I, I know you're conversing with what happened recently with Facebook and Instagram when they removed, um, I, I don't know if you saw that story, where they removed uh, that blood-stained Nigeria flag on, on, mm -hmm. their, on their platforms. They posted it as false information, you know. And I, I think that is, that is their, their um, one of uh, them Wally. playing their role to, to, to do fact-checking and to ensure that, I mean, they, they really confirm the, I mean, the authenticity of the story. All right, thank the, you, Wally, for that. Uh, I, I Wally, think after, you after, after that, they came out to apologize. I mean, after they were able to verify 
Are you with me, Wally? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right, thank you very much. All right, so um, there's this issue of sensationalization from bloggers, influencers, like you said. Now, we can keep saying, oh, you have to fact check, you have to do this. But I feel like if there is no penalty in place for people who put out fake news or who sensationalize, because we've seen issues where people go for interviews and get um, taken out of context and all of that. So if, you, if there was a committee that should be created for these people to be punished or there should be a penalty, what would you say or what would you suggest should be the penalty for putting out fake news or sensationalization? Oh, well, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a human rights activist, activist, but from what I've read, I know from, from their angle, uh, there's a limit to what you can do in that regard. You know, you don't want to uh, put people in a box, in a corner. You don't want to limit their interaction on social media. You don't want to climb clamp down, infringe on their human rights. But I feel the way forward should be uh, a collective responsibility as individuals a media organizations is to always fact check. I mean, I don't think uh, setting up um, a committee or whatever to, to start imposing sanctions would actually work. Um, I know there's an instance that, I mean, where that comes to play, uh, let me see, there's, there's, there's something I read uh, about last week or so um, in Canada, 20, 2016 or uh, 2006 or so, uh, where a Supreme Court of Canada ruled in January 20, 2006 that, a blogger, that bloggers are prohibited from reporting election results until after all polling stations are closed. Hmm. Yeah, but I, I think then again in 20, 2000, yeah, one Paul Bryan, a, a blogger who broke the rule. I mean, it was it was um, sanctioned for about twenty five thousand Canadian dollars or so. Yeah, so that's that is in Canada, but I really don't think I, I don't see that happening in Nigeria. All right, so but and like I said, the, the onus is on us as individuals and media organizations to uh, do enough fact check. I, check but your conversations check, check check for check for the credibility of whatever it is you're posting, just to be sure you're not you're not falling. Your common sense with the saying where there is no a law, there is no crime. For instance, we can assume that everyone will do the right thing when they go to the street and we say no police, but we have the police there for a reason, to maintain law and order, right? So when I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm not, I know you're not a human rights activist, but I'm saying that, don't you think that there should be a law as regards putting out fake news. Now, for instance, I'm going to talk about the NBC who has sanctioned some television stations for some unverified information they put out during the old pandemonium. And then we also saw what happened with the people who they said that caused um, chaos. Uh, what, what was the language they used for the list of people that they said on Twitter that promoted... Um, Celebrities. Yeah, celebrities was um, promoted um, anarchy in the country and putting out fake information. Now, I'm saying that if stuff like that should keep going on and we don't have a sanction, don't you think that, oh, it's easier said than done and we expect everyone, the onus is on us. But some people are feeding off the sensationalization. So I'm saying that don't you think there should be a law that applies to such people? So it's, it's a two-way thing, yeah. So uh, in as much as we are trying to um, cop fake news and we are trying to find ways to sanction people, we should also look at it from the point of view that um, social media has empowered people to report issues real life, yeah. So the, the last NSAS protest, I mean, I mean, uh, can can be a point of reference for that. And we, we've seen what media organizations like Hills and others have been doing in order to re, to report, to give live reportage on diluted journalism of what has happened. So if if there was a law in place, I mean, or whatever in place to, to put sanction on these guys, I mean, you should then be worried how how we sh I mean how we'll be able to um, to get undiluted journalism and get real time. Um, reports on, on of, of what what is happening on social media, and uh, talking about uh, clamping down. I mean, talking about um, sanctions and all of that. A, the NBC sanction wasn't really um, about fake news. Uh, I think it's a, it was about um, the extent at which these media organizations went to uh, to give real time accounts. 
And, you know, I mean, from, from the government's point of view, I don't think that is something that really, I mean, sits well with them. So, I mean, they are doing their job really, but uh, like I said, I really don't think, I mean, it should extend to social media. Maybe maybe one right activity would be in a better Okay, position, um, so let, let's bring you really back to, let's bring you back any, to your field. Any law whatsoever. The owners should be on us as organizations and, and, and individuals. Um, let's bring you back to your field, Wally. How, um, if you're going to address our viewers like um, people who really want to know, what are the tools you would recommend for anyone when they want to verify a content on any platform, be it WhatsApp, um, Twitter, Instagram, like break it down as much as you can. What are these tools and what are the steps you would recommend? Okay, thank you, Elsie. So uh, uh, it's really not, I mean, there are really not tools, but I would say um, there are actions to take. Okay. So let me give an instance. I mean, most of our older generation, are, I mean, they're culpable. Uh, my mom, <laughs> my mom my mom is an example. My mom will send you a WhatsApp busy voice note video and then put a call across instantly. Wally, please check that and I sent to you. Check, check. I said, mom, where did you get this information from? Who sent it to you? Uh, they sent it to me, Neil. You must check. You must read. So the last one she sent during this protest was that the. It, it, I don't know if you. I mean, if you were able to catch that voice note, uh, they said there there is a truckload of people from the north. They are infiltrating Lagos, and there's going to be chaos and all of that. Please be careful. Stay indoors. Stay indoors. And I'm like, please, who sent this thing? Who, do you know the person that recorded it? Were you there? She said no. Someone forwarded it to me. It's a staff of mine. And I said, okay, so why are you so sure this person is putting out the right thing? So these are the kind of things people do. They just sit down, compose messages that are able to incite whatever, share <laughs> as, as news. And I mean, and, and, and vulnerable, I mean, people people take advantage of that. And, and I mean, they believe them and spread to as many people as possible. So talk, talking about actions, I think we should start asking questions. Where did you get it from? Were you there when it happened? How, how was it recorded and all of that. I mean, if the person is not giving you concrete and for concise information, I mean, to prove that what he or she sent is real, then you should never pass it across. I mean, I've warned, I've, I've told my mom several times, no, please don't send this thing to me. And I'll keep telling her, were you there? How did it happen? So those are the kind of things we should be doing as individuals to play a part in ensuring, I mean, to, to, for, to stop, I mean, fake uh, the, the, the dissemination and spread. Of, of fake news. Also, um, a, a little Google search will help. Yeah, so if you, if you read, I mean, a sensational ed headline, I mean, oh, and oftentimes, th these kind of headlines, are, oh, I mean, they, 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 they appear too, too good to be true, sometimes too bad to be true. And you'd be like, I know, yeah, some of these media houses, are, yeah, they, they are doing what, what they call clickbait. They want traffic to their website and all of that. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the outcome is income for them, but not that at the expense of fake news, not at the expense of inciting what is not. So when I read headlines like that, I'm like, hmm, they started again. A, a, a simple Google search, if I can't find any credible reference, although most of these media houses are even, they're even worse. I, I don't start mentioning names, but you find it very difficult to even believe what is coming out again. So that's another thing to do. So the, the, the top thing to do then is just calm down. Don't always be in a rush to post. There is no trophy for Namifest post. Hold on. Take a chill pill. Let it come from, I mean, from about four or five credible media organizations before you, before you can ascertain, okay, so this thing is real. Then I can start talking about it. I can start posting so from my own point of view, I think those are the three things we need to do as individuals to, to, so to fact we've check got your what, action what, point is, right. what we see online before disseminating. If we got your action point right, you're saying ask questions, um, yeah. try to use Google to verify your information. And what's the third yeah. one, please? Take a chill pill. I mean, oh, don't, okay. don't always don't, be in Don't be too rush. fast to share the information until you verify it, yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Wally. Yeah, so um, Wally, you're going to do tea time with us, just one story. So just listen and follow okay, us, I'm, right? I'm tea, yeah, <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, cool. So <laughs> um, moving on to the next story for conversation, Wally will be joining us on that one. A Twitter user tweeted saying, Desmond Elliott is a proof that a young person could be the president of this country and still fail us, end of quote. And in response to that tweet, Davido said, quote, 
the tweet is underrated. Now, if we will have to interpret this exchange ourselves without waiting for the video to talk about it or tell us its intentions, like if you always like to say, mm -hmm. it can be said that the video absolutely agrees to the submission of the Twitter user. Um, I like Wale to even comment on this one first because um, what, what is your take on what Desmond Elliott said about the bill that should okay, be so passed? I, I think in the can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so so in the real sense, yeah, so that that is something I would say. Yeah, uh, we've said this over and over again. I mean, the person in question in particular has been has been a victim of many. Uh, what would I say? What how would I call it now? So many unimaginable things. I mean, this is the same person they saw that was commissioning plastic buckets and all of that. Uh, they saw, I mean, he was saying bowls is an, uh, they, they, I mean, that is something he's done for his constituency and all of that. Bowl has become commodity. Every house, every, every, everybody in Lagos has bowl in their house. So you can't come out and be posting bowl is what you're, you've done as consistency project. Yeah, so that, that, that was a sensational headline, another thing. But um, I, I saw the news that day. And I was trying to verify if he actually said that. There, there's a claim that there was a video of him making such, I mean, a, a statement as to, I mean, there should be, a, I mean, they, they should start censoring social media and all of that. He said, they said, in the claim, he said that on the house, I mean, in the, I mean, in the Lagos house, but that video couldn't, I mean, I couldn't pick, pick, I mean, I couldn't get a hold of that video. So, so, I mean, so those are kind of the things. And, and because this guy has a precedence, there are so many things he said in the past that you find it very difficult to, to even phantom why, how is this thing coming from the same person? And this is the same, I mean, set of people we've been clamoring to be in, I mean, in leadership positions and they end up, I mean, going there and still repeating the same thing these old guys are doing. So it's questions, it makes you question our decisions and, and clamor at times like, are this, is this even really worth it? So, so it's 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 very shameful. I mean, when when guys who put in high esteem, right, so my I question, mean, go out there oh, okay. uh, in a position of leadership. Oh, okay. and, so personally, yeah. from, okay, okay, for God. me, yeah, I don't think this is just about Desmond Elliott or the number of young people we have in leadership position mm. right now. Because as much as we can point to a Desmond Elliott, we can also points to another young person doing well somewhere as a leader, not necessarily in the government or even in the government. I also feel like it might, if, no matter how good you are, when you get into that system and you're working with every other person, you're working with the system that has been created or the system that is available. Mm -hmm. Now, is the system working as it should be? Mm -hmm. That is another question entirely. So if you pick a rotten or a good um, orange and throw into a basket of rotten like oranges. Right. It might be very difficult for you to even identify um, the, the orange that is good when you finally go there to say you want to pick that one out again. So sometimes I, I don't think it's uh, fine. I know I agree that we need younger people. We need people with progressive thought, people that would also understand how to marry social media and digital tools and our creativity mm -hmm. to pushing us to where we want to be as a people. But um, I do not expressly agree that it really has to do with age. Because if you are yeah. even older and you're progressive thinking and you evolve you. with time as it goes, then you can actually sit down and understand okay. why we need to find a way, for example, to have synergy when it comes to the data we have as a people to be able to have a database. That's an example out of many things that could be done. You know, so I, I, I don't think it's just about Desmond Elliott. I know that he, he might have disappointed a lot of people, especially with the commissioning of um, the, I don't know if it's boho now or treatment, what that treat, whatever it is he commissioned. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and his take on the regulation of social media as right. well. But I don't think this is just about one person or one bad egg. All right, so for me, I would say um, it just takes me to the lyrics of Bob Marley, which says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. A lot of people are still mentally enslaved. They believe that this is how it has worked, mm. and this is the way it will work. True. The moment we begin to see that if we need to think outside the box, if it's a straight line, we can do a zigzag to still get to the same point, that is when we will begin to actually have true freedom. So it's not a Desmond Elliot, it's not... A he, he um, uh, is not, who, who can I call now? Uh, Lil Baby. He's <laughs> <laughs> not a Lil Baby. It's just about emancipation mm. from mental slavery. Now, a lot of us are still stereotypical in our thinking. We're still, and like you said, 
It is a system that has been built. Mm -hmm. Until some people are out there, until some people, the powers that may, that are still at the top, that are still calling the shots, until they're done, you can't, we can't really, but it is, you see what I'm saying now already, you're saying that we can't really see change. Yeah, but there can be but a strategic there can be move. A strategic yeah. move, which is why we're encouraging a lot of young people out there, create political parties, get involved in politics, create your own trend. When see, you say that if you cannot beat them, mm. you will join them. And I don't think the target also has to be just um, presidency. We need to start from different somewhere, spots, local from government, the local chairman, government councillors, chairman, to councillors, to house, no, whatever of it is. You need to be able to create the rules as well. But qu very quickly before you go, Wale, um, I mentioned Adamu Gaba and a conversation came to mind because you work in that space as well, digital um, marketing. He has a platform that he's trying to push, and he's pushing it in all the wrong ways, I think, in my own personal opinion. I don't know what he calls it, but um, do you think everything he's doing regarding trying to sue Jack and trying to um, talk down on the NSAS protests, do you think all this comes from a, some, from a place of his own personal belief or just because he wants to promote his own platform that looks like Twitter? Yeah, so uh, I think it's coming from a place of um, selfish interest. I mean, so he has ulterior motives. And um, from the very first day, I saw some of his actions online as we got the NSAS protest and him trying to um, sue Jack. Uh, I, I mean, he can't do Jack. He can't do Jack. And, and I'm very happy the way Jack, I mean, the owner of um, Twitter, CEO of Twitter, has handled the situation so far. I mean, Jack not even paying him any attention shows, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, attest to the fact that uh, this this guy is really is really out there just to um, sell his own selfish interest. Uh, he's not really just he's not he's not really about the cause. So uh, and and at the end of the day, I saw I saw the platform he's trying to promote and all of that. Uh, I really don't think that 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 will go in that will go anyway. It's 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 not something. Uh, that that would even stand as a competition to what we have currently, is yeah. In as much as you have a platform to promote, I, I like you rightly said that's that's one of the many wrong ways to push or to promote a platform. You can't. I mean, you can't. You can't try to um, kill the show of of, of someone's platform or some business and try to. I mean, try to take advantage of that to promote yours. And, and if you look at what is positioning, I mean, in terms of, of what is fighting for, we will definitely know that, I mean, that's, that is a lost battle from day one. So I really don't see him winning anything here. All right. Thank you so much, Wale, for doing tea with us. You're welcome. Anytime, guys. All right. Alrighty. You want to say something before we go? Um, I think it's all been said. I think um, we just need to know that we are the change we want to see. All right. Thank you so much for watching Tea Time. Um, remember, you can catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content on social media by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Our Plus TV Africa.